Hello everybody, this is Mateo, I meet- uh, I am meeting you back at Assassin's Creed Villain, by that I mean Altair. I really hope that the guy's name is Altair. I've only played like, a little bit of the very first Assassin's Creed and that's it. Oh god, why am I- oh yeah, we saw that last time. Yeah, we, we don't want to tell her the password, uh, Wild Rose. Instead, we want to show her the ring. That's another thing you can do with certain characters, is show them an item, and you'll get a response, and normally it's just key items. In fact, I think it's always just the key items. Oh, great, it suits Men of Courage. And, so I guess that doesn't include Maria, because she is, in fact, not a man. I don't know if you noticed this. Maybe it's a spoiler and all, but just in case, she is, in fact, not a man. So, by giving her the ring, we have some text, and she will teach us the... Uh, code word Mithril, which is essentially our next objective to retrieve some Mithril because you see the Empire, they have Mithril weapons and armor, and it's much better than our crappy weapons and armor. So we, we gotta get some Mithril so we can make new weapons and armor so we don't suck as hard. And we also get a canoe while they have freaking airships. Yeah, when I say that we suck super hard, I mean it. Uh, by talking to her again, you will randomly get the keyword Dreadnought, which is a new heavily armed airship that the Empire is creating, and by learning the code word airship, uh, you can get some more information about a guy named Sid. Yes, that is correct. Sid is in this game. Final Fantasy II was the game that he was introduced in. In the remake of Final Fantasy I for the Game Boy Advance, this version actually, that's paired with this one, um, he was referenced, but there isn't an actual character named Sid. Final Fantasy II was actually the game that first introduced him, and he's been in every single one ever since. Well, the name Sid. Now, see, that's the question mark I was talking about. He doesn't know anything about, I think it was airships, so he's just like, oh, what's an airship? Even though he talked about it, the airship, the Dreadnought, earlier. So yeah, Sid was introduced in this game, which is pretty neat. And he's been around ever since. This game actually introduces a lot of uh, things that are now a staple of the Final Fantasy universe. Um, I'm wondering, this isn't too spoilery, this is the first game that has a chocobo in it, which is pretty neat. Okay, so look at Minwoo's magic. He has like all of the white spells, almost all of them. And he already has them all trained up quite a bit as well, so he's fine as it is. We don't need to train him up or anything like that. He came prepared. And now that we have the canoe, we can go over these light blue uh, water tiles, basically ponds or lakes or rivers or whatever. Um, outside of this town, I believe that this is the town of Poft. Again, I haven't played this game as much as other Final Fantasies, and I also... It's been a long time since I've played it, so I might get, like, some town names wrong or whatever. Uh, you might have seen that we were up in the forest some. Um, the way that this game works in its overworld encounters is they're basically set into certain, like, big squares. Um, if you just look at the overworld map, there'll be squares set over it, and certain enemies will show up in those squares. So I just had to go further up to get to the uh, square where we can find these new enemies. But this is just north of that town with the ship outside of it that we were there. It's not very far at all. Okay, so we had the Sprinter, which is a very vanilla enemy. We had the Vampire Thorn, which can poison you with their attack. And we have the Goblin Guards in the back here that really aren't too special either, other than their spell Bow 1, which seems to never miss, and it does, like, double damage compared to their regular attack, which still isn't that much, honestly, so... It's whatever. Uh, you might notice that I'm using my spells a lot because spells level up the exact same way that everything else in this game levels up. So I'm trying to get those spell levels up. Levels up. Currently she has Fire and Blizzard at level 3 and uh, Thunder is level 2 so we're working on that now. I want to try to get them all to level 3 uh, basically is the plan here. And also by using more spells, her magic stat will increase. Which will be really helpful so that she can do more damage overall with her spells. Yeah, you can see just right north of here is where we were. Just to get those enemies. The soldier over there, he has a kind of high defense. And 
does a quite a bit of damage, but other than that, he's not too bad at all. Okay, I had to reread this, because I thought he said Palum, which I thought was a reference to Final Fantasy IV before Final Fantasy IV even existed. Maybe the name Palum in Final Fantasy IV was a reference to that, but no, it's Palum, apparently. Because whatever. So, I think I'm going to get Protect and uh, Not Care Shell for Maria, just in case. I'm probably not going to use them too, too often. I honestly don't know. Just kind of depends on the situations. But I have them there, so they are present. What's annoying, though, in this game is that Protect and Shell have a chance of missing your characters when you're trying to use it on them to give them the boost. They might dodge it for whatever reason. Uh, so we're gonna buy items again. Yet again, I forgot that guy can't equip shields when he has an axe on, and also Minwoo can't equip a shield because he's using a staff. So really, the only person that can use a shield is Ferion. So I'm just gonna sell those two shields for a, like a fourth the, of the amount I paid for them, which kind of sucks, but I'll just cut my losses. I have quite a bit of money. Not a whole lot, but a good amount. Also, I'm just gonna sell my clothes. Luckily, I have armor, which is good enough, I guess. Okay, now then, weapon shop. I don't think that there's really too much good here. Again, I could get an axe or a mace for Furion, which are technically superior. But... Uh, he already has, like, level 3 or 4 in swords, and I don't want to restart that. I'm going to focus him in swords. Even though the attack power is higher, he will start off doing less damage because he's not as high a level. He will eventually get to the point when you use, uh, like, an axe so much with him that he will get higher. But I, I think it's just better to go with swords for him. Then it also makes the characters a little bit different and treasure chests. It's not like they're going to make every single treasure an axe. You know, they're going to be swords and treasure chests, axes, staves, bows, whatever. So I want to have different characters to use each one so I can make more use out of the treasures in each dungeon. Uh, if that makes sense. I think it does. Then again, I'm the one that thought of it. So really, just a little bit of shopping and stuff. Once you're done here, you just want to tell that guy that you want to ride the boat. You give him the money, you go out to the boat. And we will head over to the next town, which somebody referenced before. It is Paloom, right up here. And this is the only way that you can get here, for now at least. So let's, or no, this is Poft. Well, shoot, was that other town Paloom? I have no idea. Like I said, don't remember this game as well, nor its town names. I'm pretty sure that we were in Paloom. We are now in Poft, though. Oh, well. So, again, we can go around here and shop some. This place's merchandise is pretty much all the same as that other town that we were just at, the other ship town. Uh, oh yeah, it was Paloom. Darn it, I mixed them up. This is a ton of people. I don't want to talk to them all. Uh, however, I do want to talk to that guy because he's the bartender. Get some, get some beer or whatever. Okay, and this is Sid, the guy who... Uh, talked about the airship, the guy who made it, or whatever. Okay, so... He isn't important yet. He will be later. Basically, you can talk to him, give him the keyword airship, and you can give- you can get passage to certain areas for a certain amount of gil, basically. Yeah, look at that, the same exact stuff as before. Or actually, I think you have to talk to the person beside him. That's his uh, second-hand man or his apprentice or whatever. Talk to one of them, and then you can ride the airship. Uh, they can actually take you to our next goal, uh, the next town we have to go to. But it honestly isn't that far away, and we can fight some monsters on the way to level up and stuff, as well as maybe find new monsters to add to our bestiary, because again, this is a 100% bestiary run. So we just want to head west over here once we see these snowy mountains. And we will find the town. See, that wasn't far at all. It was, He wouldn't have asked for too much gil, I'm sure, but still, it's just much better to walk on over there. Okay, so in the back there we have a queen bee, which is basically a more powerful version of the hornet. 
Uh, you may be wondering, Mateo, why aren't you multi-targeting your, your attack spells there? And the reason is because I don't remember how to. I'm incredibly sure you can. And I try hitting, like, all the way left, but that just brings the arrows pointing at my team, all four of my team members, which I don't want to cast fire on my own guys. So, yeah. Instead, you're supposed to press up or down a bunch of times until you eventually uh, get it to show, get the arrow to, sh or the pointer, I guess, to show up on all the enemies. That then you'll multi-target. I thought that maybe my uh, spell level just wasn't high enough, like it had to be level five before I could multi-target or something like that, and that's why it wouldn't work. But no, in fact, you have to press up or down in order to do that, not left or right. So just a thing to keep in mind. So, yet again, after all those enemies, again, really vanilla, not a whole lot going on with them, just more HP and more attack power, we have yet another town, and this place has better weapons that we can finally use. So, we get Longsword, Battle Axe, and a uh, guy can actually dual wield axes, apparently. And so, I'm just going to have him use the Battle Axe and the Axe. Although, honestly, why didn't I just buy a second battle axe and have him use two battle axes? I honestly didn't think about that until just right now. I feel like an idiot. Well, that's a thing that happens, so... Yup, we're just gonna go on like this. Guy will be doing a little less damage than what he could honestly be doing, but it shouldn't be too bad at all. Okay, so it would appear from what these guys are saying that we're getting closer and closer to the myth roll that we're looking for. That is the... Sanctuary. I thought that that would have been a random house that maybe had some treasure in it. This, however, is a random house, but it does not have any treasure in it. Darn. Okay, so instead there's the magic shop right there. Let's see if they have anything that I might be interested in. Um, Teleport and life. Alright, we have some good stuff here, although it is really expensive. So I'm going to buy at least one life spell just because... You know, why not? And also one teleport, because... Uh, teleport will make getting out of dungeons easier, and I'm actually going to give it to Furion. You might be wondering why? Um, I'll tell you why. Teleport has basically no in-battle effect. It has- it can make enemies disappear from the battle, but it barely ever works. So, I'm just gonna give it to Ferion, and I can just use it outside of battle to leave the dungeon just fine, even though he's not a magician of any sort, so unlike Maria, how I'm making them. I could give it to Maria, however, that would take up yet another spell slot, and she only has so many. In fact, I think she already has, like, half of them, or almost half of them taken away. So instead, I'm going to give it to Ferion to save her a spell slot and still get the same effect out of it that I would uh, giving it on Maria. So that's that, and with that, we will explore this cave next time. See you all then. Goodbye.